What's up, CFO gang? It's your boy, Jay Tuck. Real football fans stand up and you're now tuned into CFO Sports. So if you are new, do us a huge favor, comment, like, subscribe somewhere down there and be sure to turn that notification bell to stay updated with all NFL news and content. Well, guys, as you can see, I am back. I am officially back from the NFL draft and I had an amazing time and I want to thank each and every one of you. And the reason why is because you guys give me the voice. You give me the platform. You give me the encouragement. You share, you like, you interact with me on Twitter. And so from your interaction of giving me this platform has excelled me to a much higher height than I ever imagined when I started this channel. To be at the NFL draft, talking to prospects, meeting some of the biggest media names, rubbing elbows, your boy Jay Tuck, to do that in this short amount of time, it doesn't happen. It doesn't happen often, but that's a testament to you guys and you guys keep me going and I cannot thank you enough. And I had the most amazing opportunity as a Cowboys fan and just as a person to meet one of my all time favorite football players and Des Bryant. You guys know I am a huge Des Bryant fan and I was fortunate enough to run into Des Bryant at my hotel and I spoke to Des and it wasn't even on any football. We didn't talk any football and to kind of show you how genuine Dez was, he took time to sit down and talk to me about life. We talked about, you know, my CFO show, what I'm trying to do, some of the insight, what he's trying to do with his personal corner. He just gave me some life advice and some things, what he's visioning. And we had just a real conversation with Dez Bryant, man. And I'm forever thankful for that. You know, that's kind of a life changing moment for me. I'm extremely ex inspired. I'm on fire right now. So I'm ready to turn things up even another notch. But so, so shout out to Dez, man. He's even following me on social media, man. So, you know, I just appreciate Dez for taking the time out of his busy schedule to even talk to me um, and spend that time and share that wisdom and share that knowledge, man. So it was a great time out there in Las Vegas. Y'all saw me day two, man. I was pulling and cooling out there at the Gronk Beach party. It was Travis Kelsey out there. I ran the Trayvon Diggs. Even met Ja Rule. Here's the crazy part. Like, Ja Rule was at the table when I was talking to Dez. I was like, yo, it's Ja Rule. But I was like, well, what are you know saying? What's up, Ja? What's going on? Because he's performing at the hotel. Uh, but me and Dez were having a conversation. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, salute to everyone out there in Vegas. All my Cowboys content creators. I had an amazing time out there with you guys. But now it's time to get back to business and talk about this draft class. So let's go ahead and get into it. So... When you look at the first day, the 24th pick when it comes to Tyler Smith, I want to say this. If you go back and, you, and I posted the tweet yesterday, when we did our first mock draft, very, very first one, our guy Dominic White, who tunes into the channel frequently, he talked about Tyler Smith and we had the conversation of getting our swing tackles to replace Tyron Smith. And when I really dove into Tyler Smith, he became pet cattler. I like Tyler Smith. I love the prospect. And here's where we have to kind of find our separation when it comes to grading this year's class. If you just look at the prospect purely and not what's available, then you might look at some of these talents with a clear eye view, as I will say, right? Now, I know when it comes to Tyler Smith, there was Devin Lloyd there, even though Nicole Dean slid, he was there. You had Wyatt there. You had Jermaine Johnson there. You had you know, a, a bulk of different prospects who we've been speaking about frequently. But we all know, what did the Cowboys really need to address? The offensive line. I mean, even if you look in our division, what's going on, defensive lines are getting stronger, bigger, especially what Philly has, has added, also what the Giants are added. So we have to solidify the trenches. And so I feel like the Cowboys had to make a trenches move, and Tyler Smith was the most, the best available after Zion Johnson and Kenyon Green got wiped, even though Jerry gonna sell y'all some cap, I am not believing it, you know, but the tackles and the guards kind of got cleared out. And so Tyler Smith was your best available option. Now me personally, would I take him at 24? No, but you were hearing some rumblings about other teams that were in high consideration of him, which could have forced the Cowboys to kind of reach a little bit and just get their guy. I mean, you even saw it with the Patriots. Y'all love, know I love me some Cole Strange as well. But maybe they reached. So they, they, they had a need. They went in and filled that void. But that kind of what happens when you back into the draft, you know, with these holes and you don't address in the offseason, you really can't go P BPA. You have to go need. 
and some people may feel that the Cowboys reach, but you know, I understand it. Now, here's the thing. You are going to have to be extremely patient with not only Tyler Smith, Cowboys Nation, but also a lot of prospects in this draft class. But I feel like eventually you guys will see the value in the Tyler Smith pick. So I gave that a B minus. Day two, Sam Williams. I wasn't really a fan of the pick. And not only because I did drop the video. And that's the great thing, right? Your boy dropped a lot of videos. That's why you got to subscribe. Dropped a lot of videos on these prospects already ahead of time. But I ain't really got to do much work. Anymore. You know, it's already out there. Go check it out if you have to. But when it comes to Sam Williams, he has the upside. He has the molding of an NFL defensive end, right? Which I think that Dan Quinn liked about him. When you watch the film, not the most explosive athlete. Doesn't have the, the nicest bend. And for me, they had some off the field issues as well. That wasn't just, you know, uh, locker room play. Like there was like domestic issues. And I don't want to dive too deep, but it was red flaggish for me where the production and the player did not outweigh it. So I feel like for Sam Williams, it's a C minus for me personally. Now, I think that Dan Quinn can mold Sam Williams to be a tremendous player for the Dallas Cowboys. But you also got to take into consideration, we got some other ends that's already in the pipeline. So Sam Williams got to kind of work his way up that ladder because I don't think none of them are going to go easy. Uh, but the next pick, Jalen Tobert, another guy who I dropped a video on who I love coming out of the draft out of the University of Southern Alabama. Um, you know, he is one of those prospects who, if he was at a bigger school, I don't think we would have had any chance to get him. Um, he's 6'2", he's physical, he has a big catch radius, he just, he's just a strong-handed guy, not the best blocker, you know, they say Tucky doesn't block much, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, but I feel like he was a great value add on day two to get your guy, so that's why I was saying I wasn't a fan of going wide receiver day one, because I felt like day two you can get extreme value, and Jalen Tober is that guy, and I'm tremendously excited about adding Jalen Tober. The next guy, Jalen Ferg Jake Ferguson, not Jalen Ferguson, Right, what kind of name was that? Jake Ferguson, tight end out of Wisconsin. And I gave it a C because it's, as a Cowboys fan, right? When we watch the Cowboys, we kind of find the Cowboys have their mold, right? They kind of like the big blocky tight ends, you know, move the chain guys. So we pretty much are showing Dalton Schultz. We can go get another Dalton Schultz. And I feel like Jake Ferguson is just kind of the Dalton Schultz swap. You know, kind of how like Kanye left Kim K and he got a girl who looks just like Kim K. It's pretty much what the Cowboys are doing with Jake Ferguson. So he's kind of the Dalton Schultz insurance plan. So I feel like he's a solid prospect. He just doesn't push the offense that next level like some of the other tight end prospects who I wanted. So I gave it a fair C. But this pick right here, Matt, well, let's go. <laughs> Matt, well, let's go, man. Uh, tackle. Got another swing tackle. So the Cowboys did double dip on the offensive line. And so here's the thing. When it comes to Matt, he might be our future left tackle in waiting. Or right tackle if they move on uh, from Terrence Steele, which I don't think they will. But now, I think that Tyler Smith will be your guard. But not only do you have Tyler Smith as your guard, you also have an insurance policy for Tyron Smith. So I feel like Matt, well, let's go. You know, well, let's go. I, I like it. That's, that's the nickname I'm giving him. You know what I'm saying? is one of my favorite prospects that the Dallas Cowboys did add in this year's class, and they got an extreme value for it. Um, so great, great, great player, physical, tough. He can move. He has quick feet, um, great leverage. He can pretty much do a variety of different things. And so I definitely like this prospect, especially to be our swing tackle, possibly starting left tackle and looming. So let's get over to day three. We have Deron Bland, big physical corner out of Fresno State. And I feel like with this pick, it's kind of the measurables guy. He's a measurable guy. He's big, has long arms. He likes to get up in you a little bit, play tough. And so I feel like with the coaching staff, they might be able to turn this into something. So I like the size. Now, you could see a situation where he could push for that cornerback position. I know a lot of people are high on Kelvin Joseph even after everything that's happened. But I feel like Bland's going to be a guy that's going to come in, like I said, with his size and his length, you know, he's going to be able to really compete at the next level. Um, Deron Clark, linebacker out of LSU. I love this pick. Great value pick, great value pick, great value pick. Now, I know he's coming off a spinal injury, and so you got to tread lightly with it. But if it doesn't work out, 
I'm okay with it. But if he comes to be healthy, he turns out to be healthy, and he resembles who he was at LSU, we have pretty much a second round, approximately first round caliber linebacker that we got on day three of the draft. So great value for Clark. I definitely love that. I would probably give him a higher grade, but sometimes with spinal, it's kind of, you, you just never know, right? But as far as the player, if you take out the injury history um, right now, incredible talent, secure tackler, come downhill, someone I would love to pair with Micah Parsons and Jabril Cox. He's kind of cut from that N'Kobe Dean-ish, you know, so we always wanted to pair N'Kobe Dean with Micah to, 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 to pair Clark with Micah, if healthy, to be a great value add. John Ridgeway, as my guy Big Game James has already gave him the nickname of the, the, the Vanilla Gorilla. Big physical, me and my guy Nicks, we always talked about getting our fat nasty. I feel like this guy is going to be fun to watch in Dallas. He's already excited. You follow him on Twitter. He's ready to go. And so I feel like he's going to be our one tech, three tech, versatile guy and get up there, plug over the center and give our linebacker space to flow. I definitely love the pick, the pick in John Ridgeway, the vanilla gorilla. Now, Devin Harper, linebacker out of Oklahoma State. Poor guy, poor fella. Because as we know, this is the Mari Cooper pick. And yeah, I just don't see the value. You cannot look at Devin Harper, whether it's film or wherever, to say that that was an equal value and fair value for Amari Cooper. Now, I don't want to harp on it, you know, because you're talking about Harper. Uh, but just think. You saw what the Ravens got for, for Hollywood Brown. If we would have held on to Lyle Collins and also Amari Cooper in the draft, what we could have possibly got, but that's neither here nor there. I feel like when it comes to Harvard, he's going to be a, a special teams guy at the most. And later down the road, he might emerge to be just a deaf piece in the linebacker core, which doesn't give me Amari Cooper value. I am sorry. Um, you know, the poor kid was just taken at a, at a poor spot, but I'm just not a fan of that pick, especially for what we use it for. Now, the one thing that kind of pushed this draft over the top is the Dallas Cowboys and the undrafted free agents that we have brought in. And if you watch my channel like you should, and if you haven't, welcome. You know, but I'm a huge Marquise Bell fan. Every mock, Marquise Bell. I talked about Marquise Bell way back in February. Marquise Bell this, Marquise Bell that, Marquise Bell that. And he is now a Dallas Cowboy. Now, it sounded like the Eagles were trying to make a push for him as well. But he has the length, size, athleticism. He likes to come down and hit. I love everything in this prospect. But not only did I love Marquis Bell, we did add Big Cat, defensive and defensive tackle. We got a guy with nastiness, nastiness out of UCF. I'm Isaac Taylor Stewart, corner out of USC, who's a solid pickup as well to add to our cornerback depth. But also Alec Lindstrom, the center out of Boston College. So I feel like we have some undrafted guys we might, like I said, it's, you're going to have to be patient. Hear me, hear me, hear me, hear me out on this. You're going to have to be patient with a lot of these prospects. But I feel like from the undrafted free agent standpoint, we have a lot of guys that's going to come in and push. And I feel like this year's draft class is going to push last year's draft class. I know 2020, that was sexy. We had CeeDee Lamb. We had Trayvon Diggs. We, we were jerseyed up, right? Last year, we had Micah. We had Boss Man. We had... You know, Osa, we kind of gave them the, the name of Team Toxic, you know, for that draft class. This year's draft class is very blue collar. Ain't going to be no jersey sales. I didn't think I didn't think the pro shop even posted no pictures or no jerseys or anything like that. Ain't going to be no jersey sales when it comes to this year's class. But as y'all know, after that 49ers game, I wanted players who were tough, who wasn't going to back down from the challenge, wasn't going to be too Hollywood, to roll down, and really get that roll their sleeves up and really get down and dirty and i feel like this is going to be this year's class and when we look up like i said my concern is like will next year be the year we see it no but i feel like as the dallas cowboys progress in the future two years three years down the road we're going to see the impact of this draft class so overall i am going to give this class a b minus i was at a c plus before the undrafted free agent started to roll in but I have us at a B minus for this draft class. You know, it's not sexy. Chiefs was sexy. Eagles was sexy. You know, Jets was sexy. Ravens were, it's not sexy, but it's solid. So I played the Dallas Cowboys had added some pieces. Now, hopefully Stephen Jones will go in free agency and do a little bit more. But hey, y'all, 
it is what it is. The roster's who the roster is. But I feel like, you know, by the time we get to preseason and also for our, our first game, a lot of these prospects are going to be ready. Honestly, I would say we have 1.5 day one starters, right? One will be Tyler Smith, no doubt, a left guard. And you'll have Jalen Tolbert. He's going to be your starting wide receiver. Now, whether he's going to be your ex wide receiver and play outside or whether they're going to plug him in the slot as well. Um, with James Washington in CD remains to be unseen. So if like he got 1.5 starters, but eventually as things transpired, he might get another one. And I think, you know, definitely in a ridge way, he's going to be in that rotation as well. So it's your boy, Jay Tuck. Comment, like, subscribe. Let me know how y'all feel about this year's draft class. Like I said, not exciting but i understand it man so um definitely comment we got a lot more work to do like i said y'all we're going to take this channel to, to a whole nother level i cannot thank each and every one of you enough for giving me the voice giving me the platform allowing me to spread my wings and fly your boys on the nfl network doing all sorts of crazy stuff man little old me can't imagine and it's only going to get bigger and better man so you definitely got to tune in so i want everyone to stay safe stay blessed stay encouraged and be patient with this year's draft.